Hey Parenting Junkies, Present Play is coming up. Find out more by visiting the link below this video. The Parenting Junkie Hey guys, welcome back to The Parenting Junkie, the place to go to love parenting and for parenting from love. If you're like most humans, you might sometimes find yourself triggered. And what that means is you've gone into fight, flight, or freeze mode. It's what happens when we get super intense, super angry, and we can't control ourselves very well. Some of us lash out, yelling, hitting, being physical, breaking things. That's fight mode. Some of us run away, we escape to our phones, we go to sleep. That's flight mode. And some of us just get paralyzed and freeze when we feel triggered. Now, if you want more about triggers, I recommend pausing this video and go and watching my seven steps to dealing with triggers video. But today I wanna to share with you a wonderful technique that I have learned from Dr. Laura Markham. And I think so many of us are big Dr. Laura Markham fans. Uh, I have done a whole series of role play episodes. So if you wanna see me acting like a three-year-old or a four-year-old and Dr. Laura behaving as my mom, so you can get a real life example of how her peaceful parenting approach works in practice. Um, then I will link to those videos uh, below this video. Dr. Laura is an esteemed mentor and I absolutely love working with her and learning from her. I've read all of her books and her most recent book has really helped me and my husband together to drill down deeper and get a practical, ongoing practice of changing our brains and rewiring ourselves so that we can handle our triggers and regulate ourselves better. So today I'm gonna to share with you one tool from there. The tool I'm about to share is called Stop, Drop and Breathe and I'll explain what it means in just a moment. But first, I want you to grab your free image of this technique. You can use the poster and the iPhone background which I have created for you. You can get it by clicking the link below absolutely free. Put it on your phone or print it out to make sure you're putting Dr. Laura's amazing tip into action right now. <laughs> By the end of this video, you will have proven action steps to take when you're getting triggered. And if you want more on that, then I recommend going deeper into her book. One of my favorite mantras from Dr. Laura Markham is, this is not an emergency. It's reminding our brains that even though we perceive our child as being in an emergency or being a danger to us or to their siblings perhaps at times, that's not the case. They're still just a little child and everything is actually okay. Our brains go into fight, flight or freeze mode because they perceive an emergency. It's like an oversensitive alarm system tripping when really you're just cooking pasta and there's no fire at all. So we see our three-year-old hit the one-year-old and we <laughs> go at him. We feel like he's attacking our baby and we have to protect him. We go into mama bear mode, right? Overprotective, angry, uh, lashing out, and we're out of control. But the truth is, it's not an emergency. And we need to teach our brains to perceive these things as not an emergency. We need to desensitize that alarm system a little bit. So how do we do this? Let's go into the steps right now. Step number one is to stop, drop, and breathe. So you actually have to physically stop whatever it is that you're doing so that you can stop the snowboarding effect of that pattern that you were going into, like yelling or hitting or picking your child up wildly or whatever it is, you have to actually stop it. And that might mean lifting up your hands or closing your mouth, doing something physical to stop the process and halt yourself in your tracks. So first step, just stop. Stop everything you're doing, stop yourself mid-sentence, lift your hands away, <laughs> pick your hands up, pretend you've just been stopped by the police and you are not allowed to move, just stop. Sometimes we think, well, I've done it now, I've started yelling, so I'm just gonna go on a whole rant. Stopping ourselves is the key. We can do it in the middle of our worst behaviors and save the process somewhat. We don't have to go with our tantrum all the way just because we started it. Drop, drop everything. Drop your agenda, drop your thoughts, just drop them like a hot potato. Just let them go for the minute, just step away from them. Imagine that you are holding something hot and you're letting it go. Your agenda right now is for obedience, is to punish, is to cause pain to the person who's causing pain to your child. 
it's to teach them a lesson and put them in their place. You have all these different agendas in that moment when you're triggered. So you have to just drop them for one minute. Just stop and drop. And then breathe. Taking deep, intentional breaths and even just noticing your breath has been proven again and again to calm the nervous system and help us get the message to our brains that this is not an emergency and our prefrontal cortex can come back online. We can start thinking logically again and making conscious choices to respond rather than react. So breathing, 10 deep breaths is a typical suggestion, but whatever works for you, maybe it's much more than that. Maybe it's breathing in, holding your breath for a few counts, and then deeply sighing it out. We want to physically send the message to our nervous system that this is not an emergency. Step two is to choose love. Whenever we are triggered, we have gone into a state of fear. We are running thoughts, automatic thoughts that we're not even aware of in our minds that say things like, this child needs to be taught a lesson. This is out of control. I'm messing this up. I can't handle this. What will happen if that's dangerous, etc., etc. All of the messages that we're flooding our brains with are messages of fear, which is why we're responding with fight or flight to begin with. We perceive a danger and an emergency. When you consciously decide to choose love as your guide, you are absolutely necessarily stepping away from fear because fear and love are opposite vibrations. They're opposite energies and opposite emotions in our bodies. We feel completely opposite when we're choosing fear and panic and when we're choosing love and trust. So once we've breathed, we can say a mantra to ourselves, something like, I choose love. Or you can say a type of prayer or a type of intention um, that I've been saying recently, which is, I release the guardian of fear. I thank the guardian of fear for trying to keep me and my child safe right now. And I choose the guardian of love. I choose to be guided by love. When you consciously tell yourself you're choosing love, the answers will come to you. You will know how to respond to your child, how to respond to yourself in that situation. It won't be such a mystery anymore. When we say the words, I choose love, we know that we need to let our anger go. Our anger can't survive in a climate of love. It's not conducive to anger. And we know that our anger wants to lash out and punish people, but when we choose a vibration of love, we know it's better for us, we feel better. We feel happier about how we handle the situation and about the energies that we're in. So choosing love is a form of self-care, of deep self-care in that moment, not to allow our angry and fearful tendencies to take over our day or our moment. Step three is to consciously choose an antidote, an opposite thought, from the thought that was causing you fear and to be triggered to begin with. If you were triggered by your three-year-old hitting your one-year-old, your thoughts might have been, he's a monster, he's out of control, he's a spoiled brat, he's gonna harm the baby, uh, I need to teach him a lesson, etc. You might have had a lot of fear-based thoughts that were judgments about how bad and how dangerous this situation was. Instead, you would consciously choose an opposite thought. If you want a very cohesive list of 110 peaceful parenting mantras in a free PDF download, then after this video, I suggest watching my video on 10 yogi principles for parenting. And finally, the fourth step that Dr. Laura Markham teaches us is to calm our bodies. It's worth taking a moment to reflect what calms your body. Everybody's different. Maybe it's a cool glass of water and just focusing on the sensation of cleansing water moving through you. Maybe it's shaking things up and putting on music, getting outside, hanging upside down or doing a handstand. Or maybe it's giving yourself a big bear hug. What would calm down your body? Again, we wanna use the subconscious uh, to send the message to the brain that this is not an emergency and that we can handle this. Everything's okay. Now, if you are getting triggered on a regular basis, give me a big love in the comments to show other parents that this is normal and that we're all getting triggered and that we're all working and figuring out the tools to help us overcome that. One of the key things I want to get across here is that you do need a consistent practice in order to overcome triggers. It's not a one and done, just like everything else in life and in parenting. 
When you go to the gym and you build a muscle, that's great. But you've got to maintain that muscle and keep up the practice if you want to keep that work that you've done. So understanding your triggers and overcoming them initially is fantastic, but you need an ongoing practice of keeping coming back uh, to keep things top of mind for you and to keep maintaining the muscles that you've built. This book is one such example of an ongoing practice where you make things practical for you. It could also be listening to guided meditations, having a meditation practice yourself, yoga, reading, listening to audiobooks or podcasts, or having a listening partnership with a close friend or even with someone you don't know. Having a practice to come back to on a weekly or sometimes daily basis is what will make these things actually take root and become your mainstay and go-to and replace your default parenting style. Now I wanna hear from you. What is your stop, drop and breathe technique that you can add here? What do you do to calm your body down? Or what mantra do you use to get you down from that fight or flight mode? If you're looking for a supportive community of like-minded parents, I warmly invite you to join our Love Parenting with Avital Facebook group. Keep on loving parenting and parenting from love because your kids need you almost as much as you need them. Bye. The Parenting Junkie.